I'm Holly. I'm Leslie. And we would be dead. 30 minute horror movies. Yay! Today, for your listening pleasure, Leslie and I will be summarizing the film Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter in 30 minutes time. Okay, I've never seen a more fucked up movie than this ever, I don't think. Yeah, I don't I don't know what to say about it. Why don't you hit us with a little summary first? Okay, so Jesus Christ Vampire Hunter was a film that came out in 2000. This is 2003, but I thought we saw it was 2001. Uh, the thing I saw said 2001. It looks like it should have been shot in 1992. So yeah. I think it was, yeah, it was released in 2001. Okay. The second coming is upon us and Jesus has returned to earth. But before he can get down to the serious business of judging the living and the dead, he has to contend with an army of vampires that can walk in the daylight. Combining kung fu action with biblical prophecy and a liberal dose of humor, the film teams with the savior with Mexican wrestling hero El Santos against mythological horrors. And there's music. Yes. So much music. (laughs) You guys, this movie was so convoluted that we can't even do it the same way we usually do it. Mm -mm. Um, Mm-mm. So this is going to be a true team effort. It's going to be me, like, plowing through the 10 pages of notes I took and Leslie correcting me and adding things. Because basically, Holly took really incredible notes, and I just stared at the (laughs) television screen. And no one could blame you for that. I swear. It's nuts. First of all, you should all go watch this, and then we need to all talk about it. In fact, I'm going to say right now, patrons— If you watch this, if enough of you watch this, we will set up like a Zoom meeting where we can talk about it. Yeah. Because I want to talk to other people about it. (laughs) I need to get some things off my chest. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, if you're new to this, you're a brand new patron in this, this this happened to be the first one you chose to listen to. (laughs) Let me explain how it works. We will start the clock, and then after that happens, we will have 30 minutes to recount this whole movie for you. Normally, we pass the story every five minutes, but this time, like I said, it's going to be a team effort. So halfway through, and when the time is up, you will hear this sound. Okay, so that means first time you hear it, we're halfway. Second time you hear it, 30 minutes has elapsed. So that really gets the pressure on us. Leslie is also going to give me warnings at five-minute increments, just like usual. Um, And we're going to do our best to blow through this. I'm going to warn you, a lot of this doesn't even make sense when you're watching it. So I think you need to just, like, put aside logic and go go along for a ride of Jesus vampire uh, madness. Also, there's so many things about lesbians in this movie, and yes. we don't think any of any weird things about lesbians, but it's the movie we were given, and you voted on it. You wanted this one. Yes. So, <laughs> so we're going to summarize it. Are we ready? Ready. Set. Go. Okay, so first of all, this movie looks like it was shot on a home video camera. We start the film with, uh, they're panning through the streets, we see traffic, and there's like a Jesus protest. People are holding signs about the Savior, and they're shouting, God damn you, and he sees you. So we see that for a couple minutes, and there's a lot of screaming, and then we cut to a man standing in front of a house, which the most overgrown front yard I have ever seen in my life. It's just This was like a sticking point. (laughs) I'm a compulsive weeder, and it made me so mad that their weeds were really high. This guy looks vaguely Jesus-y, and at first I was like, is this Jesus? The man is wearing a white shirt, a tie, an overcoat, and holding a Bible. He has big, crazy eyes, and he's screaming, maybe preaching? I don't know. Yeah. He says, be warned a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He also said, he quotes Matthew. Mm -hmm. He says, I am with you all of the days until the completion of the age. Yeah, he likes Bible verses. There's a lot of like direct Bible reading in this. And then we go to the opening credits, which looks like a 70s kung fu movie scored by like a knockoff version of Mr. Roboto. (laughs) (laughs) So then, after that happens, we cut to a car in a parking lot. The car's driving around a totally empty parking lot at night. The car parks, 
chooses a spot in the empty parking lot. And then a woman gets out. She's in a blue dress and an apron. She has short hair. The apron has a red cross on the front of it. So we assume she must be... A nurse. A nurse. Ding. Then from behind her, a lady vampire comes and starts grabbing her ass and pulling up her dress so that you can see her white thigh-high stockings, which is very unnecessary because she's not wearing a sexy dress. So then the vampire licks her neck. You see her teeth. She bites her. And then she, like, drinks her blood, pushes the nurse up against the car. You see from the inside of the car, the nurse's bloody face slide down the car window. Very dramatic. It is incredibly dramatic. The nurse, the the vampire then touches the blood on the nurse's mouth and licks it. Because, you know, we need, like, a sexy, gross thing to happen right away. And then she just steals her car. Yeah. Yeah. Blood on the windshield, turns on the wipers. You know, that's how it always goes. It's like, how did she get there in the first place? You know, like, just leave the same way you came. I don't know. She just rolled up. Yeah. She's a vampire. They or maybe came... that's why she killed her because she needed There's no the logic car. in this. No. Leslie, come on. <laughs> and then it's daytime. It is. I don't know how it got to daytime. She just drove for a few minutes and it was daytime. Um, And she pulls up to a church, which th- that's never explained. She also is picking her teeth when she all she did was drink blood. So I don't really know what's stuck in there. And then she pulls out the oldest Nokia cell phone I've ever seen and dials what I thought was like a four-digit number, but Leslie said there was, in fact, seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is how much attention we could pay. (laughs) And says, quote, where have all our lesbians gone? Oh, who is she talking to? I don't know. (laughs) Then we go across the street and we see— Oh, also, but we realize that she can, like, be out in the sun. So we're like, oh, it's like those kind of vampires. daytime. Yes. So she walks out in the daytime and she's fine. Then we see a church, uh, a priest, I think he's in front of a church, and he's running across like a freeway with busy traffic, (laughs) not at a crosswalk, just running across it. And he's in full mass attire. Like he just left mass and was like, I have something to do. Like Catholic Easter just happened and he ran away out of the church. (laughs) So he runs across the street and gets to a park with a bench, I believe it is. And there's like this punk rock guy with a mohawk that's made out of Liberty Spikes. So it's like all the little individual Mm -hmm. spiky things. And it's bright red. And he has on like a shirt with spikes on it and safety. He pins. He's like super punk rock looking, but also he's a priest. We don't know why or how, but he is yeah. because they address each other as father. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the full uniform priest says to the punk rock priest that a lot of women have been dying, and so they need to summon <laughs> you know who oh, oh. <laughs> to stop all of this. And the punk rock priest's like, not you know who. And for a minute, like maybe it's Voldemort, but it's not. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're like, okay, we're gonna do it. And then just then, a priest rolls up on a moped with a helmet. And the helmet has a channel cut down the center of it for this guy's mohawk to stick through. So good. Very good custom helmet. And the helmet also says, on- Live to pray. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he lives to pray. Then they leave together away on the moped. They drive for a little while and arrive at the beach. They're just tumbling down a dune. We don't know how they, like, where in relation to this city it was, but they're at a beach now. Um, and they see in the water, Jesus is just there out in the, in the wild. It's just yeah. a wild Jesus sighting. And he's, he's standing. <laughs> Waist deep in the water, baptizing some random woman. Um, and he sees them on the beach. He's like, oh, hey, guys. And he, <laughs> it's like he's just always there. Yeah. And he leaves the woman there whose shirt is now totally see-through. And she just, like, walks well, off days. Yeah. Well, my baptism's done. Bye. <laughs> so that happened. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> um, and then Jesus approaches the guys. And he's like, hey, guys. You want some lemonade? <laughs> Which looks like piss. It looks like a bottle of piss. I think he peed in a bottle and was like, this is my Jesus lemonade. Yeah. I don't know. Jesus made lemonade. He did. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> Around the corner. We're not going to go there. Nope. <laughs> um, so then the one guy is like, mm, I don't, I'll have some lemonade. Yeah. And then the other guy is like, no, thank you. And they say, oh, wait, but will there be enough? And he responds with, <laughs> <laughs> I thirst for nothing but justice for the fallen sheep of my flock. Great. Yeah. Very dramatic. <laughs> also, the moped priest who rolled up with a, a helmet on is, like, young and has bleach blonde hair. So everybody in this movie is punk rock, and it's, it's punk rock godspell, and we're just going to believe it. Cool. I'm with you. All right. Also, the acting is fucking awful. They're reading. They're just, I like, reading. I think that's, like, a given. Yeah. <laughs> I just need to say it. It looks like an 80s, like, skateboarding video. <laughs> that's, that's the vibe this whole movie has. We're past five minutes. Oh, no. We're only on page two. Oh, no. So then... <laughs> He says, um, here, I'm Jesus, and only I can sh- um, stop vampires. And he demonstrates this with a sandcastle. I can't tell you why. He's like, my father's <laughs> kingdom is Leslie, and there's a sandcastle. <laughs> then two vampire girls show up, and they kung fu fight Jesus. These women are just in, like, outfits they found in their house. There's no costuming sense in this movie. And they kick Jesus in the nuts, and Jesus is like, oh, man, now I'm going to get you. Um, and then he has the priests kneel in the ocean, because Leslie told me this does. 
It makes the ocean. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. It bring, it makes it like holy water. Right. And then well, first, they're blessing it. They're, I mean, they kneel to bless it. Uh, they're not just fucking, kneeling. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> they could have been peeing. Um, so then the punk rock priest gets bit, and then the mohawk priest gets bit, and then Jesus fights with the girls for a little while, then throws them into the water, and they die. Then there's blood in the water. There's blood on a Bible. Jesus hops on a moped and leaves in his Jesus clothes, which is very subtle because he has the robes on. Uh, and he leaves to the sound of a snare drum and a beat poet reading the books of the Bible <laughs> like this. Matthew, Mark, Luke, yeah. John, Bible. Bible. <laughs> Jesus then goes and gets a makeover montage where he gets a haircut, a shave, and they pierce his ears for some reason, which we don't know. Then he walks out on the street and starts singing. He can't sing. No. But he does sing and hops on a skateboard for a hot minute. The song introduces Jesus to the people. He asks if they'll help him out. They're like, no, I will not help you out. But they sing it poorly. I wonder what the drugs these people are on. I would like lots of them. They're not musical people. I don't know why they chose to sing. So in part of the song, he says, if you show me yours, I'll show you mine, and holds up his hand to show them his stigmata. That's how classy we are right now. <laughs> then a dance number erupts on a pair of stairs. It looks like the art museum in Philly. It's not, but that's what it looks like. Everyone's wearing neon, like, 1960s costumes. Then there's some faith healing and a wedding. Um, after that, he brings a murder victim who's laying in a chalk outline back to life, followed by some light gymnastics. Then people are all on board with Adidas-wearing Christ. They're all going to kill vampires. Life is good. Then the first priest, Father Eustace, comes back and he's like, hey, Jesus, you made it. And he takes him to an apartment. And he's like, ah, this apartment belongs to the church and you can use it. And Jesus is like, oh, I've slept in worse places. <laughs> now it's Scooby-Doo. And they have that spiral thing with a cross that goes like, da -na -na -na. <laughs> and they're like, we got to go to a diner. Jesus, you must be pretty hungry. So they go to get lunch with Jesus. And they're, they show like the jukebox and they sit down to eat. And Father Eustace, who... um. I think we saw before, I don't know, this whole movie is so convoluted. It says, like, listen, lots of churchy people have been being abducted by vampires, um, and I think they're being turned into vampires. You see this woman? Her name is Maxine. She worked in the soup kitchen. She's a good lady. He's like, oh, shit, that's a lesbian vampire. Um, and she was the vampire that was at the beach. Like, so he saw Right, and her. she also um, gets the nurse in the beginning. Yeah, we know that. Jesus doesn't Jesus know that. Jesus doesn't know that. But just but we, so you well, guys Jesus know that. knows everything. So now the restaurant is a place called Straight Shooters, and we can tell this by the logo that is across the waitress's boobs, and it, it it's Hooters. So basically a priest took Jesus to a Hooters. <laughs> I bet their fries are good, though. I bet they are. And then he mentions that the women that have been abducted won't be missed because of, quote, how they were, which we are to infer means that they were lesbians. Then he gives Jesus a wad of Canadian money, so we're in Canada. That's why everyone's so nice. And then Jesus leaves on his way out the door. Like, he stops somewhere and buys some wood and then happily walks down the street with the wood. And then while he's walking along, whistling with his wood, vampires pull over in a Jeep. They jump out and they call him Jesus. And they say, hey, hey, Zeus, you don't know us because we've never talked to you before, which thank you for that. That's, that's what happens when you don't know people. And then a circle of people form all around him and they rave fight to techno music. This happens in a park where a bunch of people who are just like pedestrians are sitting there watching. They clearly were not involved in the movie. No. I'm sure they were very confused. <laughs> there are uh, more cars with more people show up and they just pour out of these cars and everyone is just rave fighting Jesus. And when I say rave fighting, they're also like kind of dancing a little bit. They are, yes. Mm -hmm. It's very choreographed. Jesus hits somebody with a shoe. It makes like a comic noise, like a... Yeah. Um, and these people are like, it looks like they're people they hired on the street. They're wearing like dad clothes and mm -hmm. one guy has an Afro wig on for no reason at all. There's a lot of Jenkos. There are a lot of Jenkos too, which led me to believe it was early 90s. It wasn't. Uh, and then when they run out of people that came out of cars, the vampires that rolled up originally make a circle with their arms and more vampires tumble through it like this is some kind of weird production of Pippin. But they are no match for the Christ child. <laughs> they are not! <laughs> These people have no rhyme or reason, but Jesus wins the fight. Uh, and then they call in a guy with a big broom handle that he twirls around like a staff, and he's wearing, like, silk Asian-style pajamas. And he obviously, Jesus beats that guy, too. And then the vampires jump in. They're like, we're going to fight you now. And the lady vampire has to adjust her boobs first, which is really funny. And then Jesus wins that fight and leaves, like, a huge pile of bodies in this park. And then we get the Scooby-Doo cross again. Da -da 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 -da. Then Jesus struts down the sidewalk, Saturday Night Fever style. They really focus on his worn-out Adidas and crew socks. He arrives back at his apartment to find a lady smoking a cigarette in a camo outfit with a gun. Oh. Yeah. They fight. She pins him to the ground and straddles him and says, I'm on your side, Rabbi. And then hands him her business card. <laughs> which says... <laughs> apostle for the Apostles. And her name is Mary Magnum. Clever! Oh. I see what she did there. And She's she a big deal, guys. <laughs> kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. And she has just what he needs. And it's a sauna. <gasps> Nobody saw that one coming. They sit down in the sauna with just towels on. It's a steam room. 
It's a, sorry, it's a steam room. His was clearly like a promotional gift. It has like the logo to another film yeah. studio on it or something. <laughs> also, this steam room is like wood paneled, so that's kind yeah. of legit. But then they just have like a Tupperware bucket of rocks that they missed with like a spray bottle that would hold like glass plus. Yeah. <laughs> also, Mary Magnum has brought her laptop into the steam room. I don't know how she could see it. It would just steam up. I don't know how that wouldn't ruin it. It's like a late 90s laptop. Yeah, that would be done. It's fine. So she hops behind Jesus and starts rubbing his back. And I'm like, mm, are they going to fuck? And she says, the position of women in the church is not always so horizontal. Oh, Mary. Maybe they are going to fuck. Uh, and then she reads to him from a website that belongs to a scientist. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know who he is, but he's a scientist. And she says, this guy says that vampires, uh, they're... Vampirism can be caused by a virus, a bacteria, or a fungus. That's new. And they want to find out who this guy is. They got to find him, but that never pans out. They never even look no. for him. Yeah, they they like leave, and then that's that's it. Yep, they talked about him. They talked about him. Now yeah. they're done. That's it. Yep. And then she's like, oh, Jesus, you need clothes because you look weird in your robes. And he says, why? I have nothing to hide. And she says, maybe not, but you sure have a lot to show. Oh, damn. They're going to fuck. But they're not. Nope, they're not. This is how they get you. Then they go to a thrift store for some reason because you can't buy Jesus some first-run clothes. I don't know. He's Jesus. That's where they go. Are you sure it was a thrift store? I thought it was just yeah. a regular 90s store. No, it just looked like it was a thrift clothes. store because she was took the, she had an antique salt and pepper shaker she oh, found in right, like a right, right. and she was picking through like a box of just like doodads. It was like plastic dinosaur, a chain, a army. This dog was probably tags. when I was writing notes. <laughs> yeah, so maybe you have stuff that I don't have and you need to tell me. Um I just said they did a montage of clothes. <laughs> well, that comes in in a minute. And Mary's like, I want these salt and pepper shakers. They were very racist and terrible. Then they have a fashion show. He comes out in a bunch of different outfits, including a shirt that says, fuck me, fuck you, fuck everybody. All right, Jesus. Then Mary, all of a sudden, after he's been putting on clothes himself for a good long time, decides that she needs to help him put on shirts. And she's like, up, 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 put your arms up. And then she changes him like a toddler for no reason. So then the vampire lesbian from earlier enters and they hear her. And then they do this like weird Benny Hill switcheroo hide in the dressing room thing. They're like, gotta hide. It's so small. Oh, my, my. <laughs> Give me a boost so I can peek over the edge. So Jesus is peeking over the edge. And this, this vampire says she's looking for Johnny because that's the only name people can think of because she wants to see if there's a, a new player in town. Yes. <laughs> and then... The guy that works at the store who inexplicably speaks the way they use jive in the movie Airplane. I, I don't know why he talks like that. It's never he explained. From. He is the whitest man. He has no, he just, that's He's a his, vampire, isn't he? I don't know. He works with the vampires, but um, we never see teeth, so I don't know true. if he is one. So anyway, then she leaves and, and they come out and Jesus hands him money and he's like, that's not enough money. And they haggle over the price of his clothes. Um, I don't know why, but then finally they settle on like a price. And then Mary's like, can I have these racist salt and pepper shakers? And he's like, for free, you baby doll. And she's like, okay, daddy-o. And then they jump on a, a, a motorcycle this time, I think. Or is it yep. the moped? Uh, the moped. And then they just ride away. And as it turns out, they're following the lady vampire who is wearing capri pants, which really brought me back in time. Did. We're almost at 15 minutes. Ah! And they follow her to what looks like a parking garage. Um, and then she parks her car and then goes inside a door. They get outside of their car and they check the door. The door is locked. Oh, no. Then Jesus sees a grate in the ground, which looks like a sewer to me. Mm -hmm. And he opens the grate up. and He's going to go down it. He looks back at Mary and says, if I'm not back in five minutes, call the Pope. That's right. And she's like, fucking okay. okay and well. lights a cigarette. Then he turns around and looks at her and is like, "You ha okay, well, well no, you have he to like come. gets down into the grate and then sees that there's a place to go. And then he's just like, Mary. <laughs> and she was just like, damn it. This is great. <laughs> Get down here. And when she does climb down here, it looks like the heating ducts from Austin Powers. Yes. And they climb through. And she's dressed like, like a Charlie's angel. Yeah. She's in a red metallic one piece jumpsuit. Yeah. So it's, it, it's real Austin Powers <laughs> for a minute. It is fun. I have no excuse to wear that, but I would. Um, so then they climb through the ducks and they get into a room where there's, they see a doctor. This guy is clearly supposed to be like a mad scientist type situation. I don't think he's the scientist they were looking for. They no. only refer to him as a doctor. And he's like uttering Bible verses while carving off a big piece of skin on this woman that's laying unconscious. And the blood that he's getting splattered with is obviously a Hawaiian punch. <laughs> it's not even thick. It's, it's Kool-Aid. Yeah. And then he goes on to explain that they take skin grafts from non-vampire lesbians, and they put them onto normal everyday vampires, and then those vampires can walk around in the sunlight because of the skin graft. So they really went hard on explaining this tiny little fact that they could have just said, these vampires can go outside. Right. 
they chose against that. Okay. And then the doctor, like, tongues this body's mouth. He just, like— it's so gross. Also, the body is filled with sponges. That's, and like, tubes. what organ and that's what the organs look like. I mean, we talked to doctors this week. Human bodies are full of sponges and tubes. Yeah, I didn't know. I was very educated during this Yeah, one. I feel good. Yeah. Thanks, doctors. <laughs> It's so squishy. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Holds so much water. And apparently the woman is like a vampire waiting for her human skin graft. So like he didn't even wait. Like I, I should have a specimen ready to go for her. He just is going to let her have a giant hole in. So then the the mysterious Johnny rolls up. And so does the vampire from before who we learn they call Max. This is also Maxine, mm-hmm. the church lady. It makes sense. And then Johnny and Max talk about how vampires are just killing off lesbians one by one, and they're using lesbian skin to make these day-walking vampires. And they need more lesbians, so they head to. Oh, yes. Wait a minute. (laughs) Oh, wait a minute. We're going to get there. Yeah, and the doctor's like, well, I'm running low on skin. And they're like, okay, well, I'm really hungry. Meanwhile, Mary and the Ducks is like, Max is a sexy vampire. Does she have a girlfriend or something? And Jesus is like, what the fuck? And then Johnny and Max head over to the... (laughs) <laughs> lesbian drop-in center? Lesbian drop-off center. Do they fun. have this? Lesbians? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. Lesbian drop-off. That's so where you drop off your lesbians. Lesbians, I think it was, please I think check it was in. lesbian drop-in center. Okay. Drop-in, drop-off, Do they drop have out? this in I don't Ottawa? Know. We have a Canadian listener. Do they? Canada. <laughs> Somebody researched this for us. <laughs> the sign was like a big red heart, too. It was nuts looking. And all the lesbians are like sitting there looking like lesbians and just yeah, they got watching dropped off. TV. Like, what no. else are they going to do? <laughs> and then Max and Johnny jump in and drink their blood in a big massacre. And then their middle-aged caretaker walks in and just screams for like 25 minutes. <laughs> It's so long of that. It's the longest time ever. The Mary and Jesus enter and they're like, oh shit, this is terrible. Johnny walks up to Jesus and says, hey, you want to play a game? And Jesus is like, oh, good, a game. And he's like, oh, sure. Like they're going to yeah. pr- play Parcheesi or something. And Johnny says, close your eyes. And then Jesus does close his eyes. He's Come so on, done. Jesus. So Johnny punches them in the face and says, tag, you're it. And then they chase each other all over the place, up and down the stairs. They end up on the roof. Mary ends up facing off with Max. And she's like, oh, my God, I love your outfit. You look so good. But then Max just bites her. Yeah. And there are way too many chairs on this roof. There's like 100 chairs. Right. I mean, well, that's where you got to sit. I, to l- contemplate your life on yeah. the roof. Uh, and then it's also every- a wrestling movie, so like that's it why is. there's so many. Okay, chairs. they have to break a lot of chairs. Yeah. Exactly. Then they rave fight. Everybody rave fights all the time. Johnny and Jesus, for some reason, lace fingers and just push on each other's hands <laughs> and struggle. It doesn't make any sense. And then everyone's coughing up blood. Max drinks Mary's blood, so Mary's done. Um, and then we cut back to the weird guy in front of his house of weeds, and he ends his weird rant with "Who is my neighbor?" And then we cut to Jesus limping down the street at night to mm-hmm. sad piano music. And if you watch Arrested Development, it's like that season where they just play Christmas time <laughs> so and everybody's funny. sad. So that's what happens. Then Jesus like falls to the ground. He's all bloody and he's had a fight and it's terrible. And a cardinal, not the bird, like the church person, comes out into the alley and looks at him. And Jesus is like, help me. And the cardinal's like, hm, nope. nope. <laughs> he just walks away. And then a cop walks out and Jesus is like, help me. <laughs> the cop's like, my generosity ran out at six o'clock. And also, he's British, yeah. Australian, calls he's, him mate. Might. There's, how does he say it? Might. Yes, that's exactly how he says it. And there's no reason for this. We never go back to it again. They just were like, that guy was like, I'm going to make the most of my day on set. Um, and then, 10 minutes. And then um, a drag queen or a trans woman, it's never really totally identified, um, with a dog, runs up to him and she is going to help him. And she says, Jesus, honey, you're a mess. So she takes him to her apartment, gets him in her bed. He's shirtless, laying there with a bloody face. She's changed into some lingerie, and then she, like, tenderly wipes him off and talks slash sings to him. Yeah, it's like she's, like, singing him to sleep. Yeah, but she, her song is about how they're both different. Yeah. And so they understand each other and how she's going to take care of him, and she, like, wipes the blood off him. It's, like, a nice—it's very weird, but it's the nicest moment in the movie. It's a, it's a, it's a Bible thing. Yeah, there you go. Then we get back to the spiral cross again. da 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 um, and then Jesus uses the wood he got earlier and yep. strutted down the street with to make some steaks. So finally, we know what it's for. Not like meat steaks. <laughs> Not meat steaks. Like Buffy steaks. Yeah, killing steaks. <laughs> and then he goes back over to Hooters for a meal. <laughs> he does. It's like, I only know one place, and it's Hooters. Let's go. <laughs> so then the waitress, the same waitress as before, rolls up and like gives him a little wink. And she's like, my dessert's coming. He's like, I didn't order dessert. And she hands him what looks like a giant scoop of like... It's a bowl of vanilla ice cream with cherries. With cherries. Yeah. And the cherries have like dribbled juice all yeah, over the ice cream. Yeah, it kind of looks like a weird like 
frog face. And the juice is the same consistency as all the blood we've seen so right. far. So now so we know it, it's cherry juice. Yeah, it's disconcerting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously it starts talking to him, and it's God. It's his dad. Yeah, he's like, hey, dad, what's up? And the cherry bowl is like, hey, Jesus, how's things going? And he, like, eats one of the cherries that's his eye. <laughs> and And he's like... Listen, Jesus, you got to go find a saint, Santo, and call. And also, don't forget to call your mom. And Jesus is like, okay, Dad. It's mm-hmm. a very strange moment. And then we hear music that I can only say sounds like the score to a Western movie, but in Spanish. Oh. Yeah. And then a private jet arrives down the runway, a big, shiny private mm-hmm. jet. And Santos gets off, or Santo, they call him both. He is a very large man in a silver Mexican wrestling mask. Okay. And there's paparazzi there. They're taking Santo's picture. Uh, Jesus got a haircut now. It's not great. Santo's manager picks them up in a car. It's like the weirdest Cadillac I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. For a minute, I thought it was a hearse. It's also not great. There's like the trunk is full of garbage Yeah, it's like they didn't clean it out. They didn't at all. And Santo says, I chose to call myself a saint, so I am forever in your service. So that's why Jesus gets to call on him. Yes. He decided he was a saint. And so there you go. This guy is wearing a Mexican wrestling mask. He is not Mexican. The car takes them back to the thrift store they were at earlier so they can question the weird clerk about Johnny. Jesus tries to level with the guy. He's like, do this to save your soul, weird guy who talks like the people who talk drive an airplane. And the guy's like, no, fuck you, Jesus. And then Santo slams his face into the counter. He's like, maybe you'll talk now. Um, And and he does. And he does, but it makes no sense. It's gibberish. Yeah, he's Um, just like, Johnny will be at the point tomorrow. Yeah, we get that point. And then we get the spiral cross again. Then we cut to the doctor in a junkyard carrying a woman's body and putting it in the trunk of a car. The doctor, as I mentioned, looks like Kiefer Sutherland in Lost Boys, and it just gets more and more pronounced as the movie goes on. Seven then, minutes. Then we're, then we're at a tavern, and we see the sign says, See, blind Jimmy Leper. <laughs> <laughs> and we do. Blind Jimmy Leper comes out. He's a guy with terrible, awful, rotten teeth, a bucket hat, and wraparound sunglasses. And you know what blind Jimmy Leper does? He scats. Beautifully, He does. Too. He's skibbity bop bop scats for a while. Um... He's also wearing a bolo tie. Jesus and Santo come in. They order some beers. They sit down. We're all going to have like a great time, I know. And Santo sees two women making out, and he's like, Jesus, I have this sin of lust. (laughs) The girls look up. One of them is the nurse from the beginning. (gasps) Blind Jimmy Leper then speaks a lot of gibberish, and it ends with, Jesus Christ! So, of course, Jesus takes the sage to scat. He can't scat. He just does a little beat poetry talking about being born in a manger, and then things get weird. (laughs) They're already weird. Yeah. It can't get worse. Jesus catches sight of the whole room in a mirror. He said, I didn't really see this part. He, like, turned around on stage, and there was a mirror behind him. And so he's, like, singing to the band, but then sees that there's no reflections other than his friends in the mirror, and then turns back around, and the place is full of people. So he realizes that they're vampires. Yeah, and suddenly all the light is red. Yes. The whole room is lit by red. Now they're like, oh, no, we're full of vampires. And so then they rave fight. Because that's what we all do. Blind Jimmy Leper is on the Jesus team. He's knocking people out. Jesus is knocking vampires out with his breath. And then we, (laughs) which we're like, what the fuck is that? And then we cut to him at like a a taco truck. Taco truck eating like a garlic filled burrito. Yeah, a burrito. You have to put this together on your own. And I had to talk it out loud to Leslie when it happened. (laughs) So it's garlic. He's he's shooting his garlic breath at them and making them. I just thought he was having like a death scene and that was his happiest (laughs) moment. (laughs) I think they just had to get in every vampire cliche they could find. So that's what they did. Uh, Santo kills one of the vampires with a toothpick, like the world's smallest wooden stake. He just jabs it. He kills another guy with darts. Jesus uses crutches. Jesus starts spitting water in the faces of vampires because apparently. Minutes. His oh no! Apparently, just his his holy mouth makes it holy water, and he burns their faces off. And then Santo, after the melee occurs, Santo's like, "I am in love with that nurse." Yes. <laughs> We're like, oh. "Oh, okay, that's nice." Then Max blows glitter into Santo's face. She's Max is there because she's everywhere. And suddenly, we cut to Jesus in a bathroom, and he's like staking a woman that looks just like Kelly Clarkson. And they bust in on Santo's manager taking a shit. Yeah. Good times. Um. Then Johnny asks Santo's assistant. He get, he gets Santo's assistant, Johnny the vampire, mm-hmm. and grabs her ass. Her ass is a thing now. Everybody wants that girl's ass. It's a nice ass. Like, apparently, it's all padded up. You see it in the blooper reel in the end, because why wouldn't you have a blooper reel? Um, and then Jesus, we cut to Jesus in his apartment. He's buzzing his hair. Yeah. And cleaning his steaks, his wooden steaks, not meaty steaks. I huh. feel like that scene was supposed to be before we saw him with a new haircut. Yep. It just... <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. We find out later that when we read trivia on this, that they filmed it over the course of two years of weekends. So everybody yeah. looks different all yeah. the time. There's no continuity. 
<laughs> then suddenly Jesus's Virgin Mary nightlight starts to talk to him. He's like, hey, mom. And she's like, keep your chin up, Jesus, and help out those lesbians. He's like, no, okay, mom. <laughs> then Mary Magnum in her jumpsuit as a vampire enters with Max and Johnny for another round of rave fighting. Um, Jesus is about to stake Mary with the leg of a chair. And then they, the, then Johnny and Max say, well, we have Santo, so you have to come with us. And Jesus is like, ah, fuck. And he leaves with them. Then the weird guy comes back. He's in a bathroom. And you see a shot of Band-Aids. And he's like, physician, heal thyself. And then we cut to the junkyard again. And then Father Eustace is there. And he is also a vampire. We see his neck. That's how we know. He knocks Jesus out. Jesus wakes up. He's tied in between two cars. So they're going to like hang, draw, and quarter him, rip him in half. And then they're like, hey, 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 why lesbians? And Father Eustace is like, they're deviants and no one will miss them. See what I mean, you guys? Fuck that. That's terrible. We don't think that, but they do say it. And Jesus says, but love is love, and that's beautiful. Yeah. Jesus, or something Jesus like that. Jesus is in it. And then <laughs> Santo casually um, take, just is like, ah, oh, fuck this, and just pulls his chains off as though they were nothing, and then breaks Max in half over his knee. <laughs> <laughs> and bites off Jesus's restraints. Then everybody rave fights. Jesus kicks Father Eustace over his shoulder, like his his foot will bend that way. Mary uh, Magnum arrives on a motorcycle, and we see a scene of her like motorcycling around. Santo knocks her off the motorcycle and saves Jesus. And then all of a sudden, a clown rabbit goth lady wrestler in a Mexican wrestling mask comes out of a car, and then three other of them come out of a car. So There's suddenly, so many female yep, wrestling yep. vampires. Suddenly, it's a melee of female wrestling vampires. And then a reporter arrives on the scene from the news for TV. Yeah. What? Like she was waiting for this to happen. Yeah, and she's in a man, like a short wig and a man's suit, like an ill-fitting suit. Just let her have her thing. And she's, <laughs> I, I, I guess that's her thing. It was just very weird and confusing. Um... So then the doctor, we cut to the doctor's office and he's seeing this reporter on TV and he's like, damn you, Jesus. And then Jesus shows up and he's like, hey, bitch, I'm everywhere. Then all of a sudden, Jesus is not only in the junkyard, there are two Jesuses, Jesus. One, one is in the doctor's <laughs> office. I think it is Jesus. I think it is too. Jesus. <laughs> one is in the doctor's office. One is in the junkyard. And they're all fighting. Um, do- Jesus is fighting Johnny in the junkyard with a cross made of windshield wipers. He fights oh, the doctor who uses intestines like nunchucks. Wow. The doctor wraps his hands in human kidneys because his- he hurt his knuckles. They hurt, so he needs padding. So he uses them like boxing gloves, obviously. Um, Jesus then slits the doctor's throat and then heals his throat. Why would you do that? And he's like, because see, even in death, I love you. Didn't go well for him, though. No. Then Santos beheads all the lady wrestlers. One and a half minutes. Yeah, oh, God. Um, then the doctor drinks some blood and rebounds. Meanwhile, Johnny holds Jesus and Father Eustace um, stakes Jesus in the yeah. heart. Then we cut to Jesus like rolling around in the red light and all of a sudden white light comes out of the hole in his chest and it kills both Johnny and Father Eustace. It's like the light inside him, his soul is like killing everyone. It's killing them, his holy light. But you know what? We never see the doctor again and we don't know what happens to that Jesus. That story just implodes on itself. Yeah. Okay, so then Santos is is fighting with a woman on his team. I don't know how she got there. She has a silver mask. Jesus is like, we're going to heal these people. Pull that mask off her. And he pulls the mask off, and it's the nurse from the beginning. Her name is Maggie. She is healed, and they are in love. So good. Then Jesus is also, like, goes over to Mary Magnum, and she's saved. She has no teeth anymore. And Mary's like, hey, 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 I'm in love with Max. Can you heal her too? And Jesus is like, are you fucking kidding me? She's been bad the whole— Fine. So he heals her, and suddenly she's good, and Mary and Max make out real heavy. Um, and then they look at the Maggie, the nurse, and they're like, hey, wait a minute. I thought you were a lesbian. She's like, guys, I'm bi. <laughs> Duh. And then we all celebrate. Then we go back to the weirdo in the weeds, and he talks a lot about love. Then we cut to Jesus in a park preaching to a handful of people, and he says he'd like them to follow his teachings, and then a phone rings in the audience, and it turns out to be Jesus' phone. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, and then he finishes his sermon, and Mary's there with Max, and they have a Dalmatian now. And then music erupts. The music, uh, the lyrics to the music are, it's all good. It's all right. Two. Everybody gets laid tonight. One. Party! We did it. Do you oh, have any more? I have one more. Then we show Santos leaving with his love of his life nurse on the plane. Jesus standing on the runway with Santos' assistant with the giant ass slowly sliding her hand, his hand like into her ass, basically. Jesus is not the good guy here. He's not. And then the credits roll. I would say they roll, but they're on photocopied pieces of paper and you only see one at a time. Yeah. The end. <laughs> You did it. (laughs) I have the same amount of pages of notes. Yeah. But yours are so much more descriptive. That is why I let Holly do this because that was way better. Mine was just like, Jesus killed vampire. Now it's daytime. (laughs) Guys, this is a little like insight into how I see the world. I see the world in constant vivid description. (laughs) I thought I was. Then I was like, I did it. I didn't do that. No, it's fine. Oh, God. You guys, I... Oh, man. 
we kept looking at each other watching this because we watch it and we pause it to take notes and like, so we mm-hmm. can recount it for you. And we both just couldn't believe what we were seeing. <laughs> like, yeah, I was afraid I wasn't going to understand the movie a little bit. I don't know that I did understand the movie. Yeah. It's like they tried to make sense of certain things that didn't need to be made sense of that, you know, you yeah. could just kind of grasp. And then other things that did need to make sense didn't. They went so far to explain why the vampires could be out in the sunlight. Yeah. I didn't need to do that. I mean, this is probably why you shouldn't make a movie in two years only on weekends. Uh Uh-huh. For what looked like a budget of 75 cents. Yeah. But it was probably a lot more. Oh, it was definitely. They had like a million people doing dance sequences and stuff. Yeah. There was so much fight choreography. It wasn't good fight choreography, but there was a lot. It was definitely a lot to do. But you know what? We're still watching it. We did watch it. (laughs) You guys voted it in. Well, mind you, we had like three to two. So You're welcome. <laughs> we did it. And my friend that recommended this movie originally, I said this to Leslie, I don't think Dave is one of our patrons, but I am going to get in touch with him. This movie is like if you if you told me one person has recommended this movie to you, you get one guess. Who is that person? I'd be like, uh, oh, it's my friend Dave. <laughs> it, it's a very specific. It, it was made for a very specific person. And that person is my friend Dave. Hey, Dave. (laughs) I'll have to find a way to send this to him because he did recommend it. He's a delight. Um, Anyway, um, if we were lesbians in a world of vampires, we We would would be be dead. dead. Thank you for listening to the We Would Be Dead podcast. Hit subscribe now to never miss an episode. Rate and review our show on iTunes. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Would Be Dead Pod. And join our Facebook group to discuss the podcast and more. Matthew, Mark, Luke, yeah. John, Bible. Bible.